YouTube, what is going on? It is your boy Reese from Pokernomics. It has been almost two months since I put out a full form vlog. So we're gonna come in here, the Wednesday afternoon, Texas Card House. We're gonna put in a three hour session. Hopefully get on the Omaha table, probably start off with Hold'em. Let's go. So I head into TCH, put my name on the list for the Omaha games, and they call me pretty quickly for the big game in the back. They've got a 5-5 game going. It's a 5-5 with a 10 to 25 straddle under the gun. You get to pick the straddle. You can race for 4x that after that. Nice big Omaha game with some deep stacks. A couple of players that said they've been playing all night. This should make for a good session. I'm going to sit down with 1,500 to start. That should be plenty, but we're totally prepared to reload given how deep these stacks are. My first playable hand happens when I am in the cutoff. This is a $25 straddle hand, and I look down at the 5, 6, 7, 9 with a couple of diamonds. Player in middle position opens for 85 on that $25 straddle. A couple of other people call, as well as myself. There's four to the flop with $340 in this pot, and that flop's going to come out the queen of clubs, the seven of spades, eight of clubs. Flop the bottom end of a straight draw. It is a flush draw board and have a lot of like non-nut straight cards to make here. It's This is not a great spot to be in. The pre-flop aggressor leads out for 275 and the player in between us flats. There is a ton of money in the pot at this point. I've got like four or five clean outs. I've got three fives, three fours, or two fives I should say, maybe. Just not looking great, but with so much in there, I do want to take a turn card and see if I can't peel this off. So I call. Luckily, we peel off one of those few clean cards we have. Four of spades puts another flush draw out there as well, but we do turn the nuts. So we've got the nuts straight, and both players check around to me. I pot this. There's $11.95 in the pot at this point. Susie, the original better, folds. The player in between us, Ahmad, he calls. We decide to run it twice. He has about 700 bucks in his stack. The first board runs out a nine of hearts and the second board comes out the ace of clubs. Now, if he was chasing that club flush draw, he would have made that on that second board there. Takes a minute to pull his hand out, but he finally pulls out the 10 jack, rivered the nut straight on the first board. Thank goodness we ran it twice. We end up chopping up a couple hundred bucks profit. Not a bad way to start out your session. My second hand takes place exactly two hands later when I look down at the king, queen, queen, four with king, queen of diamonds. I'm in late position, I open for 40 here and get five callers, six of us to a flop. $240 in that pot, and that flop's going to come ace high with the ace of spades, ten of hearts, seven of clubs. Rainbow board, if I was opening with an ace or repping a strong hand, this is the kind of flop I would follow through on. Action checks around to me. I go ahead and rip it and pot it for 240 All the other players are going to fold out in position except to my neighbor to my right. Last player to act, and he's going to call. There's $720 in the pot now. The turn comes a four of spades, and he's going to check to me. Puts a flush draw out there. I check back as well. The river did not expect this one. Is the four of diamonds. So I went from kind of semi-bluffing this flop to hitting a running trips on the turn river, which has to be good given the play of this hand. Gentlemen, C5 checks to me again, and I'm going to bet 600 into this pot hoping that he will call me off with like a top two hand. I know that he's not having anything stronger than that, but he may try to bluff catch me here. Ultimately, he does tank and fold. We drag this pot. So for the next couple of orbits, we're generally card dead. We try to play a couple of hands. We're having to fold out on flops where we're just not connecting. With PLO, you can play a little bit wider range of hands and take some more flops. So this isn't anything out of the ordinary here. Our third hand of the night comes to us when we are actually under the gun first to act. It's a 5-5 five five with a 25 straddle when we look down at Queen Jack 4-4 four four with Queen Jack of Hearts. This is nothing to write home about, guys, but it's an action game, good table composure. We're going to open up here for 50, and immediately the player to our left in seat 7, he 3-bets that to 150. That scares out the rest of the players uh, in this hand. It comes back around to me. I call. We have $335 in the pot. And that flop comes out the queen of spades, queen of diamonds, three of clubs. Pretty innocuous board. I have pretty well disguised hand. So I'm going to check to our pre-flop three better. He checks as well. Turn's going to come a deuce of spades. Now this complicates things. It puts uh, some wheel draws out there as well as flush draws. And uh, we want to see if we can't get some value. We think that he might be comfortable uh, following through and betting aces on a turn since we've checked the flop. We check to him again and he bets 225 pretty quickly. After a few moments, I check raise all in. I've got like 1,200 more, and he begrudgingly folds, and we drag this pot. Now, this next hand is kind of a stinker. 
not anything great, but I love Omaha and the fact that you can really set a table image early on in a session and splash around in a few spots and reap dividends throughout the rest of that session later on. In this hand, I look down at queen 10, five, seven, double suited. I'm in the small blind. Nobody had called the straddle, so it was five, five, 20. Uh, it comes back around to me and I make it 80 to go. The big blind and the straddle call. Now there's $240 in this pot. This flop comes out the ace of hearts, the six of diamonds, deuce of spades, complete rainbow. This is the kind of flop that I should be leading out on if I'm opening pre-flop. I lead out for 150 and the player in the big blind immediately, I mean immediately, three bets me to 400. Player behind him to act fold, so it comes back around to me. Obviously, I'm bluffing with air here, have nothing to call. Uh, I'd have to let this one go. On to the next one. This next hand is an absolute banger, best hand of the session. We look down at the king 10 10 9 double suited in middle position. It's a 5 5 10 straddle hand. We open for $40 and get called in three spots before seat four action comes around back to him and he makes it 260 to go. We flat, the other three players flat. Now we are five ways to a flop with $1,300 in the pot. That flop comes out 10 high, 10 3 4 with two clubs. C3 is the first player to act post flop and he leads out for $1,000 with about $1,500 behind. The pre flop aggressor in C4 folds. Action comes to me. I go all in for about $1,450 at this point and that kills the rest of the action. Folds back around the C3. He calls and he has the absolute worst hand that, that we could see in this spot. He has ace, deuce of clubs, nut flush, and straight draw, has a ton of equity. We decide to run it twice here. So the first turn river comes out, the jack of spades actually giving us a flush and straight draw as well. Six of hearts, so we, we clip that one. We've got half this pot locked up. That second board comes out a three on the turn. Just lock it up, gang. We paired the board, tens full, and he does make the flush on that board, but doesn't matter. We made the full. It's about a $4,000 pot. Just a saucy hand, guys. We're going to drag this one in. This is going to set us up nice for the rest of the session. All right, guys, halfway through this session, just won a uh, little over 5K pot uh, in for 1500 on the 5510 straddle. It's 55 straddle up to 25. Good game, some tired players. DJ's been here all night. About to get back on the table and clip them again. Let's go. I play my next hand about two orbits later when I look down at ace, queen, six, eight, double suited, hearts and diamonds. Very playable hand in cash game PLO, especially on the button in a live game. This hand had been straddled to 25, so it's 55, 25. I open up for 75, the small blind, the big blind, and the straddle call. There's $300 in the pot, four way, and that flop comes. Jack four, deuce, all diamonds. I flop the nuts here, and I've been running hot in this game. I figure that at some point I'm gonna start getting called in some of these spots, and I bet this flop. I bet out for 225 with the hand, and everybody folds out. That's totally okay. I'll take this pot all day right here, and we move on to the next hand. Couple of hands later, I'm in the hijack. It's a $10 straddle, so five, five, 10. And I look down at ace, ace, five, three with the ace, five of hearts. Certainly a playable hand. I open for 50 and end up getting four callers. So we are five ways with $255 in the pot. This flop's gonna come out nine high, nine, five, seven, rainbow. Did not get good footage of this in this camera shot here, guys. The early position player leads out for 125 and gets a call in front of them before we ultimately decide to fold and move on to the next hand. Obviously in PLO, aces have completely different significance, preflop versus hold'em, but you know, having some suit equity, straight equity, all that kind of stuff always helps your case. Just didn't work out in this hand and we move on to the next one. Now this session is just about in the books. We're ready to close it out with a nice juicy win. We're gonna play a couple more hands. This is our straddle. We make it 25 to go in this straddle and we look down at the ace, nine, eight, deuce with two hearts. A player makes it 75 to go and the small blind calls. We're last to act here. We put in our additional 50. There's $230 in this pot and this flop comes out. Jack six, deuce, all hearts. Now the small blind checks that flop. I check that flop as well. The player that opened pre-flop for 75, he's going to follow through and he's going to bet 225 at this flop. The small blind flats, which I didn't expect with him checking an early position, and maybe he check raises, but I just didn't expect him to flat there. When he did, I'm like, okay, maybe one of you has a set, one of y'all has a flush, and just marginal. Maybe I can take this here or just get you to commit with like the worst equity possible on flop or turn. 
At this point, I decide to check raise. I make it 825 to go, raising 600 more. And the player on the button, he's going to tank for a minute and fold. And the small blind tanks for a little bit. He ultimately folds as well. After the hand, he tells me that he had a set of sixes there and let it go. And the gentleman on the button said he had flopped like a 10 high flush. So we're happy to take this pot. It's close to the end of our session. We don't want to see a board pair. We're ready to uh, just wrap it up. All right, folks, this is it. The last hand of the night. We look down at the ace, king, jack, nine, double suited. I love these kind of rappy Broadway hands. Double suited Broadway hands in cash game PLO. You can build some big pots and crack some hands with those if you know what you're doing. So in this particular spot, this had been straddled to 20. Player in middle position, Amati makes it 75 to go. I flat one of the blinds and the straddle flats as well. There's 305 in the pot. And the flop comes out, the king of hearts, ace of hearts, ten of diamonds. We flop top two, we got a backdoor spade draw, we got a gut shot, we got a few things working for us. There is a flush draw on this board. Action checks around to the preflop aggressor. He's in about 150 at this pot. We're going to flat, we want to take a turn card off, see if we cannot improve here. And the uh, player in the straddle, I believe he's seat three, he ends up calling that flop bet as well. $755 in the pot. Turn comes a queen of diamonds. We turn Broadway. It's very clear that there's going to be Broadways out there, but we do have a top two redraw. He bets 710 at this pot. We instantly repot, putting our stack in, and he calls as fast as possible to show us the queen jack of hearts. He flopped Broadway with a royal draw. Uh, river comes a 10, but it's not a card either one of us have, so it's a chop. We both had some redraw equity. He obviously had a little bit more. That was not the hand I wanted to see in that spot. I was trying to get that in against a naked Broadway hand. Nonetheless, we win some dough. We chop this pot with our buddy. And uh, with that, it is time to rack up, cash out. All right, guys, that was a pretty nice little session. Was in for three hours, bought it for 1500 bucks, cashed out 4640 sick little hourly there no real major huge decisions got paid on my big hand flop top set on the uh like 10 3 4 board with two clubs got in with a guy that had ace deuce of clubs pretty standard spot we ran it twice it held that was a big pot that drove a lot of the profit for this session had a couple other hands flopped a couple of nut flushes towards the end of the session flopped that nut flush and uh check raised player on the button bet 225 at the flop player in early position flatted that and I made it 825 to go. They both folded. One guy said he had a flush. The other one said he had a bottom set. It was a six deuce board, all hearts. So good to know, uh, you know, people will still fold a set in, in some spots. Obviously it's Omaha, but was just happy to take that pot right there and take it down. Hope you enjoyed this video. Been trying to get some more content out. We've been doing lots of short form stuff. I'm gonna get back to the long form vlogs, doing some more sessions. Told y'all we were gonna do some TCH. Told y'all we were gonna do some Omaha. Told y'all we were gonna crush it. We did. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe. We got a bunch of lurkers out there. Don't know who you are, but we have a lot of people that aren't subscribed. So help your boy out. Let's grow the channel and we'll be back next time. Later.